Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Steph Roberts with Audacious Mamas and the Audacious Life Podcast. Today, this is an episode of Audacious Mamas. On this channel, I have content for women and moms who are entrepreneurial, either have a business, want to start a business, or want to make improvements and scale their business. So I feature women entrepreneurs, experts, authors, and people like that who can give us tips on growing our business, shortcuts, simplifying, getting more bang for our buck, mindset, things that can move us forward mentally, spiritually. And with The Audacious Life, I'm really focused on women who are in transition, getting out of toxic, abusive, controlling relationships and ready to thrive and become independent, both mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. So welcome to the channel. Today, I have an amazing example. So she is a business person. Her story is really going from homeless to millionaire. And she is sharing all of the things that she learned. And if you're a woman who's like, this motherhood thing is tricky, like how do I run a business and be a mom? I want you to tune into this. Because if she can do it, you can do it. I mean, talk about perseverance. She honed in on her vision for herself, for her kids, and for her future, and really found a way to just make it happen. And I think that we need more stories like that, especially right now. So she took that experience and created an environment and a platform to support other women like you, like me, to give you shortcuts, give us shortcuts, give us templates, give us things, ideas that can help us get to where we want to go or expand our business in a new way more easily. We talk a lot about her background and then where she's going with this new platform called She Corporated. So I'm excited to share her interview. And if this content is something you're interested in hearing more about, there's way more to come and you can just subscribe here. That would be awesome trying to grow this channel and grow my audience and grow the podcast and so you can subscribe thoughts on this please do leave a comment please do share i appreciate it without further ado here she is christy carruthers of shecorporated.com enjoy thank you welcome to the audacious mama show i'm your host steph roberts and today i have a guest with an amazing story i read her article about Going from homelessness to millionaire. So she's a single mom of two kids. And so tell me your story. That article title was like, woo, it was very inspiring to me. Sure. So, you know, about seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, I guess it started. I had a consulting company and uh, it was high end jewelry and, and watches, promotions, and marketing, that sort of thing. But with a lot of international clients. And uh, I was a lone parent at the time. My daughter was five years old. And it required about a week per month of travel, which was fun, a little tough with a five-year-old, but it was great. We managed, but she, she got to see a lot of the world, which was great. But then I was pregnant with my son and realized one was tough to travel with, two was not going to work. So I started another business that was locally based and was going to have local clients. It was promotional products and printing and, and signs and displays, that sort of thing. So the idea was that would take over for the consulting business when I couldn't travel anymore, when my son was born. Unfortunately, by the time my son was born, it hadn't grown enough to, to take over financially from the other business. And the other business ended because I couldn't travel anymore. So we found ourselves in a really tough spot um, and uh, started basically just selling anything I had of value, clothing, jewelry, furniture, anything that we could do without living on credit cards. And a lot of people have done something like that. And, and eventually my son was born. I was, oh my gosh, I was on the computer until midnight the night before I went in the hospital. And I was wow. back on 24 hours later, just <laughs> trying to make sales, trying to make yeah. something happen. And after he was born, it became fairly apparent that just... I needed some other. I went out looking for a day job to supplement. I worked on the business at night and um, <laughs> I was four weeks postpartum. I couldn't fit in any of my clothes. I have no idea why anyone hired me. You get the sweats and you're right. I was such a mess in the, inter in the interviews. <laughs> I didn't tell anyone I had a newborn at home because uh, I right. didn't think that was going to make me a very desirable candidate. And yep. um, mm -hmm. luckily someone did hire me. I got a job with a radio station in the next town and started working there when he was six weeks old. He was still too young for daycare at that point. So my mom had stepped in 
and took care of him for a couple of weeks until he was eight weeks and he could go to daycare, which was awful in and of itself, having to drop him off at eight weeks. But at that point, it, it even with the day job, it still we still weren't going to make ends meet. Mm. Ended up having to sell the house to pay off the bills. And from the sale of the house, there was just barely enough money to pay the bills. There was nothing left over after that. At that point, he was about three months old and I found myself homeless. We literally could not afford a home. We couldn't afford rent, never mind buying a home. Luckily for me, my parents let us stay in their rec room for a while and, and crash at their place because that's really the only thing that kept me from a much worse, much more difficult situation. And uh, yeah, so we, I worked days at the radio station. I worked nights on my business. I saw the kids for an hour or so in between you know, midnight feedings. I was so tired that first year. I honestly, it, it's, it still upsets me. I, I really don't remember most of that first year of my son's life because I, I was either not with him or I was so tired. I don't remember it, but it really created a mindset shift for me because it, it shifted what was acceptable to me. Mm-hmm. These little people that I would do anything for mm-hmm. I had utterly failed them. So I reset my buffer zone. We all have that level that we're comfortable cruising at and everything's okay as long as it's okay until something unexpected comes up or knocks us off balance. And I decided then that that buffer zone needed to be a lot deeper (laughs) than it had been because I was, it was no longer acceptable to cruise along at that level. We had to have a lot more distance between us and, and disaster moving forward. I'd never done a vision board before. But I did my first one then, and I think I did it just to make myself feel better. I really had no idea what I was doing. What I was right. doing. Well, I can imagine staying with your two children in your parents' rec room. You need it was not fun to for anybody. Walk onto, <laughs> yeah, to anchor you. What, what? Sorry, it was not fun for anyone. I promise. Oh no, I know, and I'm just imagining like you. You would have to have something like that to keep you moving forward and. Yeah. Trigger at least some hope. Like I'm gonna get out of here, and this is gonna get better. It was very modest. It was just a home and until anything with a garden in the back. And I wanted a kitchen where I could cook with the kids. Uh, I think the most ambitious thing on there was to get my daughter into private school because she was at that point in the very lowest rated school in the entire city. So it was really to get her moved out of there and somewhere else. Yeah. So we, we went on like that. And, and about six months later, I had built the business in the evening up enough that we could find a place to rent, albeit in the worst part of town. <laughs> it was not a beautiful house, but it was somewhere where we had our own space and we had a kitchen and we, and a few months after that, I got my daughter into the private school, probably still couldn't really afford it at that point, but it needed to happen and uh, did a new vision board and set those, reset those goals a bit higher, leveled up to wanting a larger house. That was time for a new car, um, a vacation somewhere warm, all of those good things. And in my company, in the company that I started, they have a million dollar club. It's a franchise and that's the benchmark. That's the, you've made it. You're successful at that point. There's others above that. That's the real benchmark. So I put that on the vision board as well. And um, about two and a half years later, I hit the million dollar club. We went on vacation to Hawaii. We moved into a, another rental to be fair, but a newer, bigger home in a beautiful neighborhood and really moved beyond that level of where we had been. So it it was just all about changing what was acceptable for me and for my family and what I was willing to accept for us, if that makes sense. That's incredible. So the time that elapsed between landing Mm -hmm. in your parents' home and landing in Hawaii was how long? four years, maybe. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a ride. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It was, and of course, then you reset your sights on something else. You just keep leveling up, but it was a real, it was a real shift for me from realizing that just, we just couldn't ever be there again. That's awesome. So how often, cause a lot of people talk about vision boards and I know this, I've actually and, you know, I've had my own vision boards for some time and I've set them aside. I've had people say, well, you don't need the vision boards if they're not, you know, clicking with you anymore or whatever. I'm just curious how frequently you found yourself updating your vision board. Was it when you accomplished something and you'd replace it? I found it when it was the majority of it had been accomplished. With that first one, I had literally crossed off 90% of the things on that within about a year. 
and uh-huh. thought, wow, okay, it's definitely time to redo this. And I did mm-hmm. it. And then again, that second one, and it's funny because the, the, the home that I put on the vision board the second time for to move out of the bad neighborhood to the nicer house, yep. the house we moved into was almost identical. It was really it's eerie. Amazing how quickly it works. And it's, you have to be careful what you put on there because sometimes it's, it's true what you want, but not quite. It's like another alternate version of what you want. That's happened to me too, where I'm like, It's true. And I think you have to attach the feeling to it as well. Like it's not just about the house. It's about how you feel in that house. How do you feel in the, I've gotten better at it since that first stab I had at it, but I always have one going. I really, and then I updated if just, if something changes, something no longer serves me. And even if I haven't achieved it, but I've changed my goals, I'll update it. And do you do yours electronically or with actual cutout paper? I'm so old school. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, tactile. So you're cutting out the pictures. I'm a, yeah, I'm a paper girl in all aspects. So no, I have it. I actually have a, a frame, a 16 by 20 glass frame, and I oh. cut out all the pictures, print them off on the computer and cut them out. And then I put the glass back on and it sits in my room. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That sounds like you're really honoring it too. If it's behind glass, it's happening. Yeah. It's real. It's good. Yeah. Nice. Also safe from cats and pets, uh, cats and <laughs> kids, weather, whatever <laughs> dust. <laughs> yes. That's great. Yeah. You're the founder of She Corporated. Yeah. And maybe you can jump into that because that website, speaking of the vision board, I know that you have a lot of things there that you offer as templates and downloads. And that's one of them. So that yeah. explains why that's included in your download kit. I yeah. That. I think that experience that I personally had has led me, and I still have the promotional products company, and we that's still one of my main businesses. But you know, it really led me to wanting to help women mm. be the architects of their own future and to control their own destiny. There's so many barriers to anybody wanting to start a business. And for men or women, it doesn't really, it's not an easy road. But for women, there's there's even more barriers. Some of them are societal. Some of them are inherent. I think we tend to play smaller than men do. We tend to play it a little bit safe. We tend to be more caught, but then there's institutional barriers. 50% of all new entrepreneurs are, are women, but only 3% of venture capital goes to women. That's why one of the big reasons that, that women's companies don't tend to grow as large as men's do. You hit stage and then you just can't get any bigger without funding. So there's all sorts of issues. With the number of people that start business, <laughs> businesses every year, it, it just was incredible to me that we have to all, for some reason, do Google University. We have to get on our computer and how do I start a business? How do I register a business? How do I like, why is there not a roadmap for that? Why can't we make it easier? And you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what questions to ask until you've been there. And I think after starting a number of my own businesses over the years and creating that template, that path for starting a business, I just really wanted to be able to share that and, and let other women build the foundation for, the, for their own businesses and, and really create freedom for themselves through success in entrepreneurship. Because I think if you're not dependent, whether you're married, single, divorced, whatever the, the situation is, I think you still need to have your own independence to create that freedom for yourself because you just never know what's around the corner. So being able to have a successful business really creates that freedom for you. Love it. Yeah. And I'm just curious, I was thinking about this before we hopped on and I don't ask this question a lot, but for you, what are the things that being a successful mother, woman in business, how has that influenced your parenting? Do you think with your children, has any of that spilled over in a good or <laughs> positive, negative, whatever ways? Yeah. Yeah. I think the kids, they see how hard I work when that's just the way it is. I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not always available. I'm not always, I have business trips. I need to do that sort of thing. So I think uh, it's definitely given them some expectations as far as what women are capable of. My daughter is a fierce feminist. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> which is great. I love it. She's yes. Unapologetic, which is fabulous. I, I just think, I think they, they both, neither one of them is particularly entrepreneurial yet, but they, I think they're getting there. I think they yeah. they're starting to step into that, which I love. Cause I just, I love building businesses. Honestly, it's one of the, my favorite things of with my promotional company was actually getting into all of these different types of companies and types of businesses and helping with their marketing and helping them with their promotions and getting to understand how their businesses work. And so that's really exciting for me. I really enjoy it. Great. So in your shecorporated.com, you've got your circle group for yes. entrepreneurs. That's a free group. It, when people are in that group, are they going to have access to you? Are you 
because of what you just said, so excited about helping other people. Can they jump in there and yeah, so we have a bunch of free resources and thank you for mentioning that. One of them is a community because I, I think even just connecting women entrepreneurs, especially at the early stages of business, there's so much we can learn from each other and lean on each other. And being an entrepreneur can be such a lonely journey. Sometimes you're it, you're all of it. And there's you know, no one to bounce things off of. Sometimes you don't have the support of your family or your friends to, to back you up and, and go along the journey with you. So we've created a community and it's linked over from the, the website, she incorporated com and it's for women entrepreneurs in any stage and we have some later stage entrepreneurs in there who are actually working as mentors and they're going to pop in and answer questions and help and then we have early stage founders as well and it's just a, an opportunity to you know learn and grow and and we put a lot of resources in there as well and we're putting in trainings and we're putting in downloads and spreadsheets and and all sorts of resources that are going to help women on their journey so that's all in that community. And then on the website itself, there's a, there's several free downloads again for marketing templates and the vision board kit, which is cool. All sorts of great stuff on there that you can access as well. Nice. So in that community, mm -hmm. it's not exactly like Facebook because it's on circle, but it's yes. conversations, it's assets, resources, trainings. Is yeah. there any aspect of that that's live? From my perspective, there will be some times when I will go live in or we'll, oh. we'll have other experts come in and go live. So there will be some of that in there. The most of the free community will be interaction between okay. ourselves and the other entrepreneurs. And then we pop in and answer questions and put in prompts and really get people. I think one of the most valuable things for me as an entrepreneur looking at it, if I was an entrepreneur now joining it, is just having that community to get feedback from. You're working on your branding and you want to run it past a bunch of people, put it on the community site and say, hey, what do you think? Logo A, logo B, you know, why? Right. Or putting out polls for each other and saying, okay, this is what I'm thinking. Does anybody have any ideas? Because that's just something you really can't get anywhere else. Yeah, I think that's going to be really useful. Uh, yeah, I think for those of us who belong to maybe too many Facebook communities where it's sometimes a free for all and you can't, it doesn't always make sense to post those things because you don't know who's answering you, right? So yeah. if you're in a group that's specifically for women entrepreneurs, again, at all levels, I think that's a great space yeah. to get that type of feedback. And what's really nice about the, the space, so we've got it hosted on the Circle platform. It, it's going to be a smaller community, but mm -hmm. the people that are there are, are really engaged and they're there because they're, they're there for the purpose that you're there for. They're not just checking their Facebook and they get a notification and they're going to pop their head in. They're there because they're actively looking to build their community and build their business. I yeah. love the blinders of having it not on Facebook. I think that's a huge selling point yeah, for all the reasons you mentioned and just not getting distracted. So staying focused on your business. <laughs> jumping in. I just joined a Facebook terrible. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I just joined a group that does these working hours where we literally just are there together. Mm -hmm. And even that has been really helpful because it's not on Facebook and it's, you're just logging on to zoom and waving to everybody. And you might even say what you're doing and then just put your head down and do the work. Yeah. So it's co-working without I mean, going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's really been beneficial. That's cool. It sounds like you're addressing like all levels of entrepreneurship. So are, do you have an avatar? Are you looking for it? We just heard that, I don't know, what is it? 4.5 million Americans left the workforce in last month. Yeah, mostly voluntarily. <clears throat> and a lot of them were in the service industries, but are you targeting any specific group of women or is it? Really, it's just early stages women. Right. I found as I looked around, there was a lot of groups and a lot of resources for women to market their business or build their business or reach the next level in their business. But there wasn't a lot to, or anything really to help them get started in the first place. And, and for me, that's really the biggest stumbling block. It's believing you can do it, setting out the path to do it, and then actually getting motivated to do it. So that's really what we address. Now, having said that, a lot of the building blocks that we're giving women to start their businesses, many women who started their businesses over the last few years or up to about 10 years may have missed a lot of those steps. And I found as I was building this, even there was a few things that I went, I never did that for my life. <laughs> I never did that. I should have done that. It makes because me feel better because when I was doing the same thing, I was going through your, you have these great little short seven minute or so podcasts. And yeah. I was looking through and I was like, I didn't do that. Like maybe I started it, to feel a little bit like, 
No, but that's the thing. Cause you don't know until, and then right. it's much later and you think, oh, do I need to do that? But when you look at them, for example, when you look at the SWAT, the strengths, weaknesses, <clears throat> excuse me, opportunities and threats, and you start to really look at that spreadsheet and it doesn't matter what level of business you're at, unless you're a huge corporation, you probably didn't do some of those steps. And when you start looking at it now, you go, wait a minute, that's an opportunity that I could take advantage of now. It doesn't just have to be when you're building a business. It's right. something that you could actually do all along the way. So I think there's value there no matter what level you're at in your business, but specifically it's designed to help a woman who's either just knows that she wants to start a business, but doesn't even mm -hmm. know what that business would be. So she's still looking for her idea to somebody who's in the early stages of starting a business, but wants to make sure she's got her foundation and she's, you know, got everything, um, organized the way it needs to be and has covered all our bases. Right. So it, that's really the, the main, and it doesn't matter what industry, because what we cover, if you're, you could be in multi-level marketing, you could be opening a restaurant. It's the basic foundational stuff that every single business needs. So it's the coming up with your idea, validating your idea, coming up with your branding, registering your business, all, everything, all the things. So yes. it's, it's really for any woman starting a business. That's awesome. Yeah. So what are some of the things, so I'm coming from the, spent a lot of years doing the online marketing, digital marketing, video marketing, all those things. And that people are really tired. And I think it's a lot of it's just social media in general, but a lot of it's just COVID and sitting behind a computer and just being tired in general of anything virtual. <laughs> so yeah. is there anything that you're in terms of differentiating your approach? Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you are excited about or your, your perspective is not to go down a specific path? Cause you see people yeah. getting sucked into things that maybe are taking up their time. Is there anything that you want to share around that? Yeah. For me, my main goal with this, it's got to be online because we've got to be able to reach anyone wherever they happen to be, but we're all so busy. We, there's no time for fluff. I don't have time for fluff. If I start doing a training or reading something and it's, I need actionable steps. Mm -hmm. I need exactly what I need to know and nothing else at this point. Okay. You know, it would yeah, be great, great to learn the history and the theory of whatever. When I have some time, I don't have time. And I think that's most women right now. Jump in, jump out, get it done. Yeah. 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 We keep the lessons short. We keep the podcast is yeah, every episode, I think is under 10 minutes. It's yeah. here's your step for this week. It's simple. It's actionable. Do it. We'll see you next week. And you just keep moving yeah. forward. And I'm a big believer in as long as you're headed in the right direction, Progress. it doesn't matter how fast you're moving. You're going to get there. You can't fail unless you quit, which sounds a bit trite, but I think if you really think about your goal and you think about, all right, if I don't reach that goal, let's say my goal is to make a million dollars by next December. If I don't reach that goal, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to keep trying. I'm not going to quit. So eventually I'm going to reach that goal. So I can't fail. I'm guaranteed to succeed as long as I keep moving towards that goal, whether it's a tiny step today and a big leap tomorrow makes no difference. So I think as long as we keep everybody moving forward and, and that's really our goal, here's the little steps, take them as you can this week, maybe life is crazy and you can't get it done next week. Maybe you have time for two steps, but just actionable steps to move everybody forward. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. And keeping it simple, keeping it really simple is very realistic. <laughs> Love that. And so it sounds like you're super busy. You're a mom, you're a single mom. You're, are your parents helping you by the way, or do you have another? Oh, my, my parents are amazing. My kids now are, are 13 cool. and uh, seven. So they require a little, it's more chauffeuring yeah, yeah. <laughs> than babysitting. Um, yeah. But my parents have always been great. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Do you have any, because I know mindset for me anyway, as a newer entrepreneur, has been the greatest hurdle. Are there any books or resources that you recommend to people who are just getting into this that can help with that piece of it? I think my favorite mindset, and there's, yeah, I'm sure there's tons of others, but the one that I always go back to is Jack Canfield. Mm -hmm. Secrets of success. I just, every chapter in that has got such power. And I think probably one of the reasons I like it is because he gives you actionable steps in right. every step of the way, right? It's not just theory. It's here's why now here's how you do it. Here's why here's how you do it. And he tackles it from all angles. Yeah. So yeah. I, I really, I've bought that book. I must be 15 times over the last few years just giving awesome. it to people. And then I don't have to buy. It oh, that's great. I love that. Yeah. That says a lot. Yeah. I'll put that's that in the show notes too. 
And any other thoughts that you want to leave with anybody tuning in? Sure. For women that are thinking of starting their own business or have started their own business, we've got a really great kickstart program that we do. We do it just a few times each year, but we always have the the waitlist page open so okay. that you can sign up for the next one and reserve a seat. And mm-hmm. it's, it's totally free. It's a five day business kickstart challenge event. And we really, we start with your idea, coming up with an idea or fine tuning your idea. Then we go to validating your idea and how you can make sure it's, it's going to be successful. And that's a step that so many people miss and it's so critical and it can be a lot of fun as well. And then go through branding. We go through mindset and we go through making sure that you're building a business that you love. So it's, it's five days. It's a ton of really great content. And it also connects you with kind of a cohort of women that are, go through that with you and you get to carry on with them and um, build yourself a bit of a business bestie group that you can, yeah, that you can work with. So it's a great event. And let's say we only do it a few times per year, but you can sign up for the wait list on, on the website on shecorporated.com. Awesome. I love that. Thank you so much for your time, Christy. I don't want to keep you any longer than we need to. This is great. And there's so much good stuff there. I just want to let people know I've checked out the website thoroughly. And I just think the way I love the way that you you've incorporated your podcast into kind of more of a lessons format with your downloadables. It's just very well thought out. It's probably one of the best websites I've seen in a long time. Thank you. It's very action oriented and saves a lot of time. So bravo. (laughs) (laughs) That's my mantra. (laughs) Exactly. You did it. (laughs) Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christy. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Seth. You're welcome.